And this is Rita Cosby. You know, the National Quartet Convention, it takes place every year in Louisville. It is Christian Music's largest annual event. 500 exhibitors, 300 gospel recording artists in attendance. And every year they have interesting speakers and different people. And I was there last year, and it was one of the most incredible events I've ever seen. Um, Very much faith-filled, all about family. And uh, this year they have an incredible speaker who's going to be there. Um, You have known his name for many, many years, and he has an undiscovered talent. I didn't know this until just recently. So he is not just an incredible lawman and and also former governor, um, but he is also, uh, from what I understand, an incredible singer. And this year, the former U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft is going to be keynoting at the National Quartet Convention. It's taking place September 10th through the 16th. He's going to be speaking on Thursday the 15th at 10.30 in Louisville. If you're in the area, you definitely want to go to this. It is a must-see event, uh, three days of great music. And this year, John Ashcroft, the former U.S. Attorney General, will be there. And he joins us now today. I'm so glad to have you with us, sir. Well, what a pleasant and... Uh pleasing surprise it is to be speaking with you again. I remember the times when we worked together when I was Attorney General of the United States and you were at the hub of the coverage and the news that followed the attacks on America and 9-11, etc. So uh, I really much uh, much appreciate your... Uh, and matter of fact, before 9-11, as I recall, in the early part of the year 2001, Yeah, and in fact, you know, I was just thinking as we're here, I was thinking, I remember you and I were talking quite a bit at the time. I was senior correspondent with Fox News, and we were, I was, of course, dealing with a lot of the coverage of 9-11. And then before that, I got the letter, remember, from Timothy McVeigh. Indeed. Explaining why he carried out the Oklahoma City bombing. You're the only person I know in my understanding that spoke to Timothy McVeigh and the Pope. (laughs) <laughs> and John to... Ashcroft. <laughs> well, I'm, I hope I'm somewhere in between the two of them in terms of, but uh, you you covered uh, a wide variety of individuals. So it's very pleasing to talk to you again. And yes, indeed, I am uh, returning a little bit to my roots in gospel music. I first uh, had the opportunity to record uh, a couple albums back in the 1970s, and then I wrote an album which of my own music, which I recorded uh, shortly after I left the governor's office. That was almost almost 20 years ago now. So uh, it's going to be a real delight to be in Louisville with uh, Clark Beasley and the others. Organizers oh, and, and they are great with the Gaithers and the Beasleys. They're, I mean, these are legends in the gospel music, as you know, and, and the best that there are. And uh, it, how long have you been singing for? Like, when did you start, and are you still singing? Well, <laughs> I'm going to sing at the uh, convention, and uh, but it's harder for me to sing. And uh, either my ear has improved so that I <laughs> value my voice, or I understand that all the shouting and screaming and arguing you do in politics, uh, and uh, adding several decades doesn't really do a lot to help one's voice. But I'm 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 going to be there. I'm going to sing. I've taken an interest in uh, gospel music again and in hymn singing in particular and have devoted all the resources related to my singing to the music department at Evangel University, which is a liberal arts university in my hometown of Springfield, Missouri. Fantastic. And everybody, we are talking with former U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft. He's now chairman of the Ashcroft Law Firm and uh, and obviously a singing sensation. And he's going to be singing. I, I'm so bummed I'm not going to be there, Mr. Attorney General. Well, I, I'll I send you an album. Would you please? I can't wait. I can, do, can we get a little sample? Is there a little sample we can hear now? Not now. <laughs> I, you know, the, the, the weaker you are as a performer or singer or communicator, the more you need back up <laughs> so you tell them to raise the voices right raise that's what i i want those i want the instrumentation to cover a multitude of uh well flaws oh i'm sure you're going to be fantastic i and i can't wait to hear it i i'm really excited this is also obviously it follows 9-11 weekend um you know big weekend here um in new york city where i'm based 10-year anniversary. Um, what goes through your mind? And, and, you know, I think I think there's something really beautiful about the National Quartet Convention, focusing on faith, focusing on family, 
Um, you know, I think this is a, when you think of 9-11, what helped us get through it as a country were family and faith. Well, there's no question about it that the real strength of America is to be found in the character of the American people and the regard that people have for each other, the respect that we have for one another in terms of human dignity, the fact that of uh, no matter who you are or where you came from, America is probably the best place in the world to give you an opportunity to reach the potential that God's placed within you. So America is really worth defending. And for those who uh, assaulted America uh, a decade ago, it would be a decade ago this Sunday on the uh, 11th, uh, they really um, don't believe in the kind of freedom and opportunity that America offers. And they wanted to displace it. And obviously they couldn't get the world to say uh, we reject what America offers uh, in any free sense. So they had to try and force it by causing terror or causing disruption to do by force what they couldn't do by virtue of persuasion. And when the American people rallied and resisted, I think uh, the world again learned that America may be gentle, America may be kind, but the American people are willing to defend at very high levels of even sacrifice the virtue and freedom that's made America a special place. What do you think of, too, uh, at this 10-year anniversary? Because I think your message is so powerful and, and exactly right. I mean, we are the greatest country in the world, and it's a privilege, I think, to be an American and, and to you know promote freedom and, and help the rest of the world, too, in so many places. Uh, you know, time and time again, you know, America steps in and helps. And, and obviously we're vulnerable because we represent freedom and represent democracy. And here we are 10 years later. What goes through your mind, Mr. Attorney General? Well, first of all, I'm very pleased that we have not been hit again. And uh, I think we've watched as attacks have been levied at different parts of the world and in other cultures. And I think one of the reasons we haven't been hit again, one of the reasons I would add, is that uh, we have been as a society both governmentally and individually alert. When we talk about the disruption of terrorist attacks, We have to credit the citizenry with a lot of our success. A number of the major plots have been foiled because individual citizens have been alert. And uh, I was uh, recently pleased to see the Director of Homeland Security commending the citizenry to be vigilant. And uh, 10 years ago, there were voices in America when we asked the American people to be vigilant who said, oh, that was somehow subversive. They were going to be looking after their neighbors in a way which would cause people to turn against other people. I don't think that's the character of the American people. Our vigilance has been successful, and it has been used with discretion. We're not spying on each other. But when when we see someone impairing or threatening to impair the freedom and justice and the opportunity which America characterizes, we're we're going to take action. And Americans have done that, and we've been joined in that by people from around the globe. I think that's in large measure because it's understood that freedom isn't something that's just reserved to the heart of Americans, but something that God has placed in the very uh, fabric of humanity, that we all yearn to be free and have a certain capacity to respect freedom. Absolutely. Stay with us if you could. We are talking to the U.S. Attorney General, the former one, Mr. John Ashcroft, who led the U.S. Department of Justice, I think, through uh, one of the most difficult times, and I thought you did such a great job. Please stay with us, everyone. We're going to continue with the former U.S. Attorney General, John Ashcroft, right after the break here on The Rita Cosby Show. 800-321-8828. And this is Rita Cosby. We continue now with the former U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft. He was at the helm after 9-11, reorganizing the department. And, of course, his top priority was to prevent another attack. And basically, there were so many terrorist cells. There were so many things to discover. There were so many vulnerabilities in our, uh, you know, in our infrastructure that we had to pay attention to and talk about one of the toughest jobs in the world. Uh, he is credited and his anti-terrorism campaign, a very tough one that he led, uh, which was critically important, I believe, at that time but critical to disrupting over 150 terrorist plots worldwide. 
And uh, we're so glad to have you still with us, uh, Mr. Attorney General. You know, I, I think now as we're heading to the 9-11 anniversary, the 10-year anniversary, we are still getting bulletins. And we just got one a few days ago talking about be on alert, you know, especially Americans traveling overseas. There was another one for fear of light planes maybe could be packed with explosives. But this is a time to, to be safe, to be on alert, to be aware, because we know that, unfortunately, you know, as we know, when we went into Osama bin Laden's lair, he had talked about the 10-year anniversary. Um, what do you see as now our perspective here we are, and what could, you, you know, should we be concerned about? Well, first of all, you need we need to understand that the threat of terror is an evolving threat, and the bane of defense has always been preparing for the last war and not preparing for the next war. So we have to be anticipatory in the way we deal with things not just preventional to prevent the last kind of attack, but we have to anticipate what the terrorist might do. So I think we have to understand that the world is a more and more dangerous place. In order for us to be safer in a more dangerous place, we have to be aggressive and we have to be very in- intelligent. And so- um, did, you know, as we go back and you're going to the quartet convention, do you think faith got you through it? Well, obviously, um, you know, there's an old saying that there aren't any atheists in foxholes. And there were a lot of us praying pretty earnestly that that God would help us to do the kinds of things that would provide a basis for success. There's a, a proverb, I believe, or an old verse out of the Psalms that says that except the Lord watches a city, the watchman watches in vain. Yep. So I think the point for me was always to pray as hard as I could and work as hard as I could. It's that old old saw that I think has got a lot of wisdom in it. it says row as if there is no god i mean yeah yeah row as if there is no god and pray as if there were no oars you know so if you want you want to want to do things do everything you can in your part and then ask god to help you well, I'm glad that you were at the helm, especially during a very difficult time here in America. And uh, it's been a real privilege to have you with us. And I can't wait. I hope everybody in the Louisville area comes on out to the National Quartet Convention. Uh, you will be singing What a Treat on September 15th in the morning there. It's the National Quartet Convention. You can get the information there online. And you can hear the former U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft singing. So what a treat. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Rita. Thank you dearly. Thank you very much. And good luck on the stage. <laughs> and I can't wait to hear him sing sometime. That does, What a great thing. What a great talent. And it's been great to know that he was at the helm during a very difficult time in America. We're going to be right back, everybody, after the break. This is The Rita Cosby Show. 800-321-8828. 